Hello, everybody. Welcome back to How Come. Today's episode is so good. We're talking to Nicole Aniston, who has been in the adult industry for like 12 to 13 years. Um, She is a business owner. She's a model. She's an investor. She's the co-owner of Sugar Taco. She's been featured in Paper, Vice, Rolling Stone, The Defined, and much more. Um, She's currently working on her Closer to Nicole project, which is a new NFT adult site. Um, where you can buy her content, but in the form of NFTs. So we're talking about that, what that means as a creator, what that means as a consumer. Um, we are also talking about um, how sex work and reproductive rights, how the fight for them uh, is similar and why they're both important. I don't know if you guys heard about this. It kind of got buried in you know, all the other news, I guess, this month. But Indiana became the first state to pass an abortion ban in the post-Roe v. Wade world, um, which sucks. Um, Definitely start donating to more abortion funds in Indiana. Again, if you haven't been, um, if you have friends living in Indiana, always let them know that they have a safe place with you if uh, they need to go camping out of state. So we're going to be talking about uh, reproductive rights and um, a little bit about the patriarchy and what it is so scared of and a bunch of other fun stuff too, which I just think you're going to love. Nicole is amazing. You're going to love the episode. I love it a lot. Um, Enjoy. How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeve. I'm rolling up my sleeve. Oh baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can do it by myself. I wanna just so excited for today's guest. You guys, welcome Nicole Aniston. Thanks for having me. Of course. You have been in the adult industry for years and you just started your own project, which is called Closer to Nicole, where you sell NFTs that provide access to an exclusive community and new scenes. Can you tell us about that? What is an adult NFT? Like, how long have you been doing this? How did you think of it? Well, I think it's been about a solid two years since I had the idea mm-hmm. and I just kind of watched the the trajectory of like the way everything was going with OnlyFans and how frequently mm-hmm. my own videos were so regularly stolen from OnlyFans and then posted up on a tube site and like, well, no wonder no one wants to get into porn. I always wondered about that. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, they pay the monthly membership, then they steal a bunch of content and uh-huh. then they post it on Pornhub and then they re- request uh, a refund or a char- like a chargeback. wild. So it's, and they're making sense. So I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I just like, I feel like it's this okay. is so interesting because we've had a bunch of episodes about OnlyFans and yeah. people do ask that question. They're like, what stops anybody from stealing that content? And my answer has always been like, well, why would they want to do that? Well, exactly. You know, if they paid for the thing and they're having like the personal relationship, why would they want to do that? You'd think so. Like the less frequently, like a lot, what a lot of girls have been doing is having a free OnlyFans and then they have to pay through direct message. And so it makes it less, I guess, incentivized for the purchaser of that video. For example, if that one video, they access the profile for free, but they mm-hmm. paid more than my monthly membership for one five to 10 minute video, they're not Mm going to want to, you know, put that, they're not going to be able to make their money up or recoup their money. But for my members, what I've done is, you know, have really easily accessible videos through direct message or on the, on the timeline just for them to access because they've already paid a monthly fee. Mm -hmm. They think that they're entitled to take that video and post it on like a tube site and make literally cents on the dollar per click. They're not Mm. making, you know, it's not comparable or reasonable what they're making. They're making like nothing. But anyway, I just was seeing this happen. I was seeing a lot of stuff come out in the industry. You know, after I took my breast implants out in 2019, I was hitting OnlyFans hard and it was so much fun Mm. and had really no desire to go back to shooting for studios. And then in 2020, the great catalyst year, all kinds of stuff started happening. Like a lot of girls were coming forward and 
claiming that they had been victimized by these male predators mm-hmm. um, that even I had known personally for years and they they never approached me in that sense. But it was kind of a shock to see all, you know, these people get blasted for their predatory behavior. So I was thinking, what? Could, how could we do this in a way that we could um, not put the, a middleman between an explicit content creator and their goals in keeping their explicit material safe, you know, involving, you know, creating like an NFT type thing where the members, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it just keeps the content a little bit more safe and um, keeps it just a little bit less freely accessible to those who don't need to be looking at explicit content. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, there was, there were just a few more blockades in the way it's not, it's not foolproof. There are mm-hmm. things getting hacked every day that we think are absolutely, you know, knock on wood, foolproof. But um, it's just one more step towards keeping explicit material in the right hands to those mm-hmm. that are, you know, going forward as an adult, decidedly choosing to have that video mm-hmm. as more of a luxury item than just a free for all where they can go on and access pornography at will and just you know and i don't know it's it's kind of cool it's more exclusive community too than i ever expected Mm -hmm. it to be which has been really fun getting to know new people getting suggestions from them on new videos um and having like a a little bit more of a a community sense um rather than only fans which is unfortunately just this the volume of only fans is kind of a free-for-all yeah i'm and only fans has changed in a lot of ways and they've like kind of turned their back on sex work to begin with which is what made the platform so successful in the first place um do you still have an only fans i do i still have okay. only fans and i'm still fully engaged in that members mm-hmm. are you know stoked with the amateur content but mm-hmm. as far as producing um high quality professionally shot and edited stuff that's only ever going to be on closer to nicole there's no point in me showing up on a Mm -hmm. set spending 12 hours being someone else's product for a one-time pay and never Mm -hmm. seeing another dime of that whereas this is you know i'm choosing these scene partners i'm paying for these scenes to be created they're being Mm -hmm. shot most of you know in a location that i'm providing so they're they're, there's a lot more sanctity and and creative more safety in that as well way more safety it's my day it's my production yeah, they are under my, you know, watch for the day mm-hmm. and nothing's going to happen in my home, you know, when when it's my camera guy I've known for 12 years and you know, so it's like there's there's a lot more creative control and there's a lot more um safety involved everybody's got paperwork, everybody's got IDs. It's still, mm-hmm. you know, airtight in that legal way to where it's respectable and a safe environment. There's nobody mm-hmm. dangling any carrots for anybody to obtain yeah. anything. So. Is it interesting coming from like now you're the one who has to make it the safe space? We always have like no matter what in the beginning of every scene, even if it's just, you know, shooting content with mm-hmm. just two people there, there's always a conversation. What do you like and what do you not like? Mm-hmm. You know, what what are your do's and don'ts mm-hmm. so that I know as a as a person, as your partner, so that I don't cross your boundary and make you uncomfortable. I want totally. you to feel really safe in my presence mm-hmm. and for my production, I'm paying you to be here and I want you to enjoy yourself to the extent. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to be super comfortable and I don't want you to leave my my production for my yeah. NFT project going, oh, it was shitty or I don't feel good about myself. So I just wanted to eliminate that and this is a really good way to do it. If you're, you know, you're, people are already producing their own content on OnlyFans. A mm-hmm. lot of talent um, across the board have just pushed companies to the side because they don't need to do that anymore. They can produce their own content and make the same income and not have to go be someone else's, you know, puppet for the day. Um, Which those are wonderful days. A lot of the crews I've had over the years have been phenomenal, just incredible, fun, super exciting work environments and really pleasurable and no, no boundaries were crossed. But of Mm -hmm. the very few days that I'm like, Oh, I wouldn't do that again. I would trade what I've been doing for the NFT project. 10 times over to avoid those little days where it's like somebody's two hours late or (laughs) somebody feels violated or somebody's got a rash or, you know, Mm -hmm. or you see that the project is getting like pushed out again, but you're not seeing any more money for that because that wasn't in your initial contract. They'll revamp a scene 10 years later and then be like, Mm -hmm. remember when Nicole was young and it's like, thank you very much you know (laughs) so it's just silly stuff like that like I don't I don't want to be somebody else's product and then never see another dime there's not like residuals 
Yeah. You're, you've got your one-time fee and then you're done and they can continue to crank out that scene years mm-hmm. and years and years. It never goes away. And mm-hmm. even the scenes for the companies, they get snagged and put on Pornhub. And then that sucks because if you want to keep your, you know, for example, if you're an influencer and you've never done explicit content, mm-hmm. but you want to venture into that for your fans are asking about it, you feel brave enough to want to, you know, maybe yeah. choose that for yourself, create that content. There's going to be very few people that are going to see that incentive of having their very exclusive nudity or explicit material shared to no end on tube mm. sites. And mm-hmm. they're just, they're going to get constantly ripped off. And then that, that takes away from the exclusivity. This is a way more exclusive, totally. like community style way to do this for someone, especially who's never produced explicit material. Yeah. And you were saying that it's not like a hundred percent guaranteed lockbox, which I think it's like nothing ever is if it's out on the internet or in the world, but it's an added layer. And it is, I do yeah. think if you're going to be producing content, like you have to accept that somehow people that you didn't want this to see this might see it. Um, yeah. And that sucks, but it, it's there's more ways to do it to protect yourself and make sure that at the end of the day, you're getting paid for it. So your sure. site, we've kind of talked about NFTs a little bit, but I don't know if anybody truly understands. Would you do us the extreme honor of breaking down NFTs <laughs> on how come? I can do my best. Um, okay. When I, because my, I thank God I have the most amazing tech team that mm-hmm. understands a lot of the little tiny details that mm-hmm. I, I still am learning to wrap my head around and they've really helped me learn a ton. But it's, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, uh, there are certain numbers of these in my particular project, for example, maybe it's a photo, maybe it's a video, but there's certain numbers of each one being produced. And mm-hmm. if you, you know, you have that and it's yours, you can resell it. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can hang on to that and then that grants you access to a lot of other cool incentives as far as like our Discord channel and things like that. Um, choosing details for scenes and partners for subsequent scenes followed up within the series. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a, with the NFTs, it's kind of like a, a one of one. Like there's one of yeah. these, it's digital, you have access to it, you have a, you know, a, a way to access it where others can't access it. And so that's kind of like your, I guess, non-fungible, your little token that you mm-hmm. have that you can do with what you what you please. And some are more valuable. But I think what the interesting thing about the, the paradigm is that it's reteaching value and mm-hmm. in a really subjective way. I've had to learn to chill on what I don't think is of great value because I've seen things that I wouldn't quite want to own myself that have sold for $700,000. And uh-huh. I think it looks silly. I think it's a silly little digital thing. You can only look at your phone and see that and mm-hmm. enjoy that image or whatever it is or video. So I don't know. It's so subjective. And yet people are reshaping what they deem valuable with this. And there's a lot of like integrity and in owning that thing. And right. I don't know. There's a lot of other cool stuff that the way I, I don't have the words <laughs> like I don't understand it as best I need to the way that I've understood it it's okay so it's a non-fungible token so it's something that you can't hold fungibly uh, <laughs> but there's yeah. only a few of them made in the world the way that if like an artist <clears throat> makes a painting they say like one of two one of 200 or whatever three of yeah. 300 um, those are the ones that exist um then there are in the real world prints of those things where you can have a print of a starry night on your wall but people know that that's not real starry night that you don't own that starry night and so if we go with the art metaphor even further some people have said it's like if you had the mona lisa Mm -hmm. and it belongs to the museum, but you can buy one of 500 parts of ownership to that Mona Lisa. She's going to stay mm-hmm. there. You cannot touch mm-hmm. her, but you own parts of her to, let's say, if she's to get sold to another museum or whatever. And the 
only thing that tells you that you own that Mona Lisa is that you have a serial number that's in a closet in the back where there's 500 other serial numbers who own the thing. Um, you can sell your serial number to something and you can get royalties if it is resold. Yeah. That's where I'm at with that. I have been asked, do you, would you ever invest in NFTs? I don't know. I think they sound like a really great idea that a lot of dudes are getting into because dudes love, and I hate to be gendered on this, but this isn't like men, dudes, dudes love gambling. Dudes love new stuff. They love Bitcoin. They love NFTs. Um, because they love fucking finance. They love anything nebulous that a lot of people don't understand except them. Um, or they think a lot of people don't understand except them. Yeah. But the thing is, is they jump on board with stuff because they've got more disposable income. If it works out, yay. If it doesn't, okay. Um, And people are really getting into NFTs, whether they fully understand them or they don't. But they seem to be a really great way. Like somebody approached me about selling jokes as NFTs. And I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, hmm, maybe, you know, right. That sounds interesting. Um, I think it's the same as I feel about my jokes that I'm like, okay, somebody might be able to see them. I have to be proud enough for them to get out. Yeah. Um, but yes, I would like to be paid more for my work than I already am right now. Of course. So I think that's a really cool thing when it comes to you. If yours get resold, you're seeing a 30% royalty, Yeah. which is like 30% more than you were seeing before. I mean, I never saw another dime after I left, you know, a set mm-hmm. for a company and there's no guarantee in getting hired by them again either. And no mm-hmm. matter what, if you're going to produce another scene, you have to work another scene and that's yeah. a whole nother scene partner, another, you know, possibly four hours of driving that day for me because I don't live near these studios and mm-hmm. it's a whole day. It's a whole day of production and this and that and makeup and irritation and my skin doesn't like this fabric. And then there's this guy, he's got this big giant wiener Mm -hmm. and and there's all this stuff that comes with, which I just would far rather just, I'm going to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. I love these studios. They're beautiful. It's wonderfully shot content, but I'd rather just do my own thing because my fan, my fans are saying, yeah, we want something exclusive Mm -hmm. that we're not going to be able to just, Oh, well, it's already on Pornhub. Right. And I, you know, that way they feel like know, they just have more of a relationship with you, right? Way more, way more. And the discord is so cool because we get to, you know, if you, if you are an access pass holder, you get into the discord and then we're chatting and having AMAs and answering questions. And, you know, it's, and so it's do way those more discords of a community. exist as an NFT too. Like, can they re-experience those discord chats or the, like the AMAs, I think we've got a couple saved. We've been trying to mm-hmm. save them, but we, you know, we schedule them far enough out so that people can join or not join and make them as frequent as we can so that some are mm-hmm. during the week, some are during the weekend. But yeah, I think we've got re-recordings of a couple of those. Cool. So yeah. how did you, um, were you already doing NFT or like buying NFTs before you came up with the project? No. When, okay. when I first started learning about NFTs, um, I, I had a partner at the time who was really big into it. He got really into it and um, took great offense. Romantic partner or scene romantic partner? Romantic partner. Okay, okay. Yeah, romantic partner who was very um, offended that I didn't take as much interest in getting involved. And so once I, you know, I was like, oh gosh, how can I how can I make this new thing work for me? Not just jump into what everyone else is choosing for themselves. Uh And so then the project was birthed. I connected with um, my team and partners and stuff, and they all collaborated on a lot of ideas to make it better. And, you know, it's the starting phase. Who knows? It's going to evolve into something else. I'm sure the startup, you know, of anything new is like, okay, let's start here and see how we can improve as we go based on, you know, suggestions, constructive criticism and whatnot. We love it. Um, what's your goal? Like, do you have an idea of what you want it to be eventually? Like it's a baby now, but what about its future? I want it to be a a paradigm, like a a Mm -hmm. whole new paradigm shift and a possibility for people to, you know, have a space to upload 
the content. It's, it's safe for yeah. work and non-safe for work if they wish to. Yeah. But in a way that's separate from OnlyFans, um, separate from working in an industry where they don't feel 100% safe. Yeah. If they want to be the controller of their content, own their content and track and be able to manage where it goes with you know, legal terms of service that those who sign up to access this content abide by and agree to it just holds people a little bit more accountable. And I think that, you know, porn's kind of a wild west still. It's all over the place. And there's a lot of people who are still not very favorable as far as when it comes to explicit material. So, you know, let's make it back into something like that's great. If they can make a, a, a pixelated JPEG and put a massive, you know, a price tag on that that is far surpasses someone's mortgage. Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's we can do porn. We can do the same with porn because if it's so, totally. it's, it's already so marginalized and like let's make it a luxury item again. Let's make yeah. it a little bit, you know, still easily accessible, but so that um, it's kind of a more of a, you know. A, an accom- accommodation or a commodity I think that people have to go seek out they can't just click in triple x and then up comes every you know explicit film they can get their hands on without clicking or verifying their age and identity yeah when you were first starting out were there any stigmas that held you back from entering into the industry in the adult industry yeah no I got in out of pure financial necessity and had mm-hmm. very little sexual experience so, you know, I weighed my options. I really had to do something. I was in a real crunch and I was like, I don't have any education and I don't deem myself of, at the time, did not deem myself of great value enough to create an opportunity for myself that paid what I required to survive. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, what's easy and fast. And so I did a couple of shoots and some go and pretty soon it snowballed out into control. And, you know, there comes a time I think everyone could attest to their, their coming a time in explicit um, content creation or sex work in general, mm-hmm. where you question yourself, you ask yourself who you are, what you're mm-hmm. doing, why, a lot of whys. Um, but it served a great catalyst for me um, in the way that it provided the financial safety and security mm-hmm. and allowed me to relax out of the fight or flight stage of my life to embody comfort and yeah you know just learn being able to learn being able to expand past this little bubble of awareness of where's my next check or my next me- next meal going to come from mm-hmm. it helped me just relax and feel at home in my body build confidence um sur- you know completely squash and heal sexual trauma that came mm-hmm. before getting into the sex industry um by repetitious safe environments where mm-hmm. I was creating an, an, a place for myself to have sexual encounters that were always in a controlled environment. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of great things that came out of it. Unbeknownst to me at the time when I entered the industry, I thought I'm just going to make a quick buck. Yeah. And it ended up being really serendipitous and really beneficial. That's great. Um, it does make me sad to hear though that somebody could get into it for the money and still not be seeing all the money that they are entitled to for sure it's it, that's kind of how it's been set up i mean it's yeah kind of a pyramid structure it's it mimics patriarchy at large in yeah. other industries 100%. It, precisely it's a male dominated male created male everything you know mm-hmm. all these gatekeepers in the adult industry are primarily male Mm -hmm. and straight male. So Mm -hmm. you kind of have to go in and go, okay, is this okay? Is this okay? Is the, am I okay? Yeah. And you know, 12 years ago when I got in or almost 13 years ago, it was, you know, I was kind of living in that world anyway. So it was like, okay, well, sex isn't really here for me to enjoy. I'm here to be enjoyed. And that was completely, it's ridiculous. And it did phase out through the, the cycles of like going through and being on a porn set where I was like, I'm in control here. There was Mm -hmm. a lot of control here that I have in this environment. And this partner is getting paid to be here with me and I'm getting a check for this. And I don't know, it just ended up being unexpectedly safe, empowering, fun. Mm -hmm. And um, allowed me to just kind of step out of my comfort zone of being um, just a treat. 
and, yeah, and just and totally. a treat for men to observe. It was yeah. completely flipped my script on myself, my own self narrative, my relationship with other women. It was, it was mm-hmm. really incredible. Do you now make more stuff that like you enjoy and that you would watch versus yes. stuff that you'd had to create? Yeah. Before? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I wouldn't watch myself give a hand job. Mm-hmm. Like never, you know, back when you first start out and you're just like, Hey, will you come by to the studio and do a hand job scene? Like now I'm hiring the talent. These are people that I see and I'm like, Whoa, that's, I want to produce beautiful stuff with this person. Mm-hmm. And I go with requests of course of my fans, but they'll usually just give me a genre. Like they're like, we want anal. Yeah. You don't care who it's with, you know? Yeah. So that's really great. But yeah, I am. Especially or who's given it? Project, who's given it? They don't even really care. It's mm-hmm. great. So I get to choose who I want in my butt and not who this studio back in the day would have paired me with. Yeah. This giant, you know, guy who wouldn't allow me to have a pleasurable anal experience. Totally. So you could pick the it's toys. Been great to, you could pick if you I were can wearing the everything. strap and doing the anal. Yeah, it's all <laughs> it's all my creative thing. And yeah. it's, so it's been like, oh, oh, I will totally I'll do this for like this will be the studio work that I'll do mm-hmm. um until this this will snowball, it will catch on. It, I know that the first phase, of course, it will need some tweaking as we go along. Mm-hmm. But this this will become something that'll be easily utilizable for, for everybody. And it's hard because look at a lot of people are sending me DMs on OnlyFans going, How do I get how do I I don't know what to do? It's like go in the discord channel. We've got instructions. We've got on how to start their own stuff on how to, well, and how to get started in purchasing in the closer to Nicole. Oh, okay. But would you ever become a hub for other people that wanted to? Okay. That would be my initial, that was kind of like one of my core thoughts on it is to get it started with me because Mm -hmm. I'm not in this to make a bazillion dollars. I'm in it to create something new. And when you're looking for a paradigm shift, you have to start with like this base level, long, solid, flat foundation where yeah. there's not a whole lot of building going up. But I know that this is a really good idea. And I know that there's other people that once they understand how, you know, the implications of what this means long term for their, they're keeping their content safe and mm-hmm. earning more money, they're going to jump on this. I don't think the crypto or the NFT space is going to go anywhere. I think it's going to be something just to build upon. Mm-hmm. And the thing with the safety too is, um, I think I understood that you can see exactly what gets sold to everybody, right? It's like yeah. verified, yeah, better than. So there's only no fans. going on. Definitely better yeah. in that way. Um, you know, there's no. I, it can go on to Pornhub and there's a username. You know, X Y Z one two three who uploaded my video that I posted yesterday, mm-hmm. and there's no real comparing or tracking or monitoring that person's username to their username as the subscriber on my OnlyFans to which, you know, who I can't find out who stole it. Mm-hmm. There's this anonymity there that's kind of mysterious. And since so our people have taken advantage, they're just trying to make a buck. I understand that mm-hmm. that's it's piracy. And I know it's totally it's explicit material for some reason. They deem it like, well, it's just porn. It's like, I paid to create this. It's mine. It's my body. It's my I paid to create it. Creation. It's my set. And it's me doing gross stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know I've been a porn star for 13 years, but it's still, you know, you as a an male user cannot profit off of my explicit material. It's no. my body and I'm choosing to do these things. And unless I say, here's a video, share it, share it with the world. Yeah. Take it to all the other men. I don't know. It's just, I think that this new way to do things is as we start to, you know, pull these seams a little bit tighter as we go along and change things. I think it's really going to build something new, something far more secure for explicit material. Mm -hmm. And this isn't your first business either. Um, You're running several other businesses. What was the first one that you started? I think the the longest running one that I've been a, a partnership in is probably sugar taco mm-hmm. um the vegan women-owned uh plant-based mexican restaurant there's two in la and then that third one coming soon cool did you have any like fundraising challenges when you were starting these businesses i got lucky um mm-hmm. in really synchronistically connecting with the right partners who are very, very like-minded in the ways that they see the ethics behind what I'm trying to explain and develop. 
Mm -hmm. And if I have an idea for something, I've gotten really good connections over the years with um, other people, primarily men, because that's kind of who I have to approach um, for these ideas and say, look, I want to develop this. And they're like, Mm -hmm. God, that's a really good idea. Okay, let's do that. And if not, then I just put my own money towards it. Mm -hmm. You said earlier that uh, working in the industry changed your relationship with women. Can you describe what you mean by that? I, um, I had a weird relationship with, I had like some, I had female friends growing up and stuff like Mm -hmm. that did not identify, did not understand my own sexuality for a really long time and actually Mm -hmm. had a, a little bit of an intimidation and a fear with other women and actually for a long time had very toxic female friendships and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And so it was, it was kind of a really long process of learning through being sexual with other women Mm -hmm. to get comfortable with my own femininity Mm -hmm. as well as building better female bonds and better female relationships by just being with sexually with other women and being on set and being vulnerable with other women that was harder for me yeah than doing boy boy girl scenes with Mm -hmm. a male talent that was it was harder for me to be with other women and to have that kind of openness in that way So, and that, I feel like that bled into a lot of creating healthier um, female relationships and friendships in my life. That's cool. I'm still kind of like weeding through that process as to how that came about, but it's tough. It was was perfect. Yeah. There's like a real, like, I don't know if this is where you were coming from, but I feel like I have a real internalized misogyny where I just didn't think that the opinions of the women like were as valuable as the guys around me so I was so used to just like catering to guys and being friends with certain girls because the guys like them and you know not really I can can relate to that I can relate to that in the way of like honestly feeling more of like well they seem to know like what to do all the time so I guess I'll just I'll just sit over here and be quiet. And it wasn't until I was like probably 27 or 28 when I started to go, I I have a fucking opinion and I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I got way far, you know, you kind of have that rubber band pullback effect when you let go Mm -hmm. and you're like, fuck everything. And then you're like, you know, fuck the patriarchy. And then you go this complete opposite way. And then you become a man eater for a little while. And (laughs) so that wasn't healthy either. Um, But, you know, I had to experience the contrast of both the perceived victimization of patriarchal tendencies over decision to my position and come reestablished as the the true kind of, you know, confident um, leader mentality. So I don't know, I needed to go like a little full warrior for a little while and then Mm -hmm. really understand what it is to be truly empowered and Mm -hmm. Uh, to find more sacred relationships with people of all genders. I think it's really interesting that the consumers of porn are primarily Mm -hmm. male, right? But then also the people shitting on people for having done porn are also primarily male. I hate to do a man Haiti episode. It's not like there are tons of great guys. It just seems like this has been a wave that's been mounting. And I um, saw this tweet that was like, the fight for sex work and the fight for reproductive rights are linked because they both support body autonomy and they Mm -hmm. both empower female bodied people. And it Mm -hmm. just seems like they keep going after stuff that empowers us. Why? I feel like it's very deeply rooted. Um, And as, as, off kilter as it sounds, I feel like it goes back thousands of years to this mystified like fear of Mm -hmm. the receptivity and intuitive nature of the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. I think that it's this deeply seated fear of losing control and being rejected. And you know, you think about like the divine feminine has the fear, the unbalanced divine feminine has the fear of Um, abandonment and the unbalanced Mm -hmm. divine masculine has the fear of rejection. And Mm -hmm. so it's like, well, if you, like, I've gotten so many of the stupid archetypical question, why don't you take cum in your mouth? And it Mm -hmm. always makes me laugh because it's like, if you're as a man, if you're at home jerking off, Uh this is so much TMI. I'm so sorry. But if you're at home jerking off, do you come into your hand and immediately consume it? (laughs) Like, 
what makes you feel like you need me to complete this task for you? Do you need to feel like I am hot or is it actually a deep seated desire to be accepted by me? Mm. And so it's like, if we as the collective divine masculine as unbalanced and patriarchal as we are right now start to feel the loss of the grip of control or perceived control of this mystified amazing wisdom keeper that gives birth into this world and creates peace and harmony we won't have war we won't have strife there won't be scarcity Mm -hmm. there won't be difficulties or you know combativeness that there just it will be far more harmony and yet there is this like top percentile that absolutely so wholeheartedly believe that there is something to fear in women Mm -hmm. that they are somehow sneaky manipulative Mm -hmm. I don't know like it's like this weird mystical fear and I don't know if that the whole like taking way of like you know shitting on porn and stuff like that they don't want to see this incredible immaculate divine receptive power feel em- empowered mm-hmm. they don't want it to feel empowered or a lot of men many men don't they they really are so fucking mad about many, what's going on right now so many are and so mad and they're so furious because it's they're objectively great. ridiculous yes. yeah they're awesome and it is rege- objectively ridiculous the imbalance um but it's that coming into balance with the men who have felt deserved and mm-hmm. entitled to this this hierarchy and mm-hmm. for so long it's been conditioned in them they don't really understand the difference that i mean it's there's been a lot of other marginalized groups of people that have fallen by the wayside mm-hmm. in lieu of straight men and so it's it's coming it's slowly creeping up i think it's inevitable the change in the paradigm shift is inevitable you see all these incredible empowerment movements coming from the chaos of the attempt to suppress Mm. so it's like yeah we would be moving in a far more you know expedited direction if there wasn't the desire of this masculine patriarchal tendency and it's not just men there Mm. are women embodying this patriarchal tendency as well yeah so it's just that paradigm saying anybody who doesn't understand people voting and being against their own um rights needs to read animal farm We'll maybe mm-hmm. have a whole discussion on it, but it's like there's infighting amongst marginalized people because they're supposed to be because then the people at the top that's can just, they're creating. That's it. what they're doing. That's the goal. Um, yeah. So I just I find it interesting, too, because there are some people that I've spoken to who really aren't as mad as they should be. And have just told mm-hmm. me, well, the pendulum always swings. It swings back and forth and you just have to wait for it to swing the next time. First of all, I think inactivity is just boating it for it to swing further one way. But the other thing is I have never lived in a time, I don't really know of a time where the pendulum has swung so hard the other way, where there have been 150 female presidents there you know like when did it swing so hard that there was a matriarchy for 200 years in this country when did it swing so hard that there were votes against male body autonomy well it's like are these cycles thousands of years i it's never swung that hard and it's because we don't want it to swing it that hard because we're nice exactly we would never yeah because (laughs) <laughs> we are we embody empathy we, yeah. we understand we are a very we're a generally the divine feminine is a very sentient and empathic tendency to be and so we understand that we cannot tell you what to do with your testicle excretions nope because it's not our business Just and if not it were me. you would be pissed at us if we tried to be, tell you that okay and all we would be pissed at us too like we would we would be pissed i have said the thing as like a proposal oh could this be a thing that you know that happens and you store come and the doctor's like no it's not reversible that way and no come can't live that long so no we take that off the table you know like i don't yeah. think any i have been seeing people with the signs being like you don't want us to have abortions get a vasectomy but i don't think that that's what they mean they mean none of us want to be regulating each other's bodies yeah it means like you know put yourself in our shoes yeah exactly you know if a male if a if a 
if a physiological, objectively yes. male body could be impregnated and experience the the intense discomfort mm -hmm. and sometimes trauma of pregnancy and delivery, mm -hmm. they would immediately, they, it's, it's lack of empathy. Mm -hmm. It's like, why is the penalty for rape not as critical as it is for because one of the they abortions. haven't experienced rape as much as we have yeah like yeah point blank they care about it less yeah. because they haven't gone through it as much and with the lack of empathy they're they're not able to understand like and i think you know that pendulum swings kind of a joke it's it it's, doesn't it, otherwise we it would hits have been a wall able to and then it swings back that way yeah it's like yeah, a it's like oh, a, it's, a tether ball attached to a wall. It's not a pendulum. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not gonna. No matter what, like we're at a phase. Like we have to go through these like solar cycles every twenty six thousand years, where shit starts to hit the fan, and we're right about at that precipice right now. And I don't see a whole lot of laydown coming. Mm -hmm. Like the the everything feminine, everything feminine is not going to just go okay, whatever you want, sir. You know, mm -hmm. even the earth herself is going, fuck you. Get out. <laughs> stop. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Stop treating me like, like an, a battered woman. Mm -hmm. Stop treating me like a battered, you know, female partner. It's, just, tree. it's ridiculous. I know. I know. I know. I have not, but I've it's heard the, the tearjerker. It's the saddest so. book in the entire world. And it's just about oh. a little boy who takes and takes and takes from this tree. And she's like, you can use my branches to build a boat. You can use my... Oh, know. yes. I remember that now. Yeah, yeah I and do. And then she's just yeah. a stump. And she's like, well, use me. Rest on me. And she was happy yeah. because she could give to him. Like, we want, we want everyone to be happy and good. And I think what's troubling yeah. for a lot of people... Okay in moving forward is that they've never seen that work before. They've never seen yeah. a true equality in race, in gender, in sexuality, you know, like that's never been a yeah. thing that we've experienced. So it seems something hard to aspire to, but like, it's been a long time of that, like hierarchical, yeah. you know, I'm up here as, because I'm part of this lineage or this family or this, you know, it's been that way for so many thousands of years. It's going to be, a, it's, you know, old habits die hard. Mm -hmm. And we're right there where we're going to see another good decade or more of really harsh ugliness come to the surface because it has to, we can't, all these, you know, all these long kept secrets and all this stuff has to come out and mm -hmm. all these truths have to rise up to the surface. And no matter what it's, it is going to shift. It's just that trickle down effect right now that we're experiencing at the beginning stages where this, four-year-old little boy mm -hmm. who is you know embodying this control system is having a tantrum when mommy caught him doing something he's not supposed to do and he's now not going to be allowed to do that anymore he's throwing his little four-year-old self to the ground and trying to guilt trip and negotiate and point fingers and try to you know all the little four-year-old tantrum thing it's very cute but it's not going to work and right yeah did you see um I know though this wasn't supposed to be a political conversation, but it's always political. Um, <laughs> there we go. That's where we are right now. There's two things because um, of the tantrum. Did you see that article? I think it was written for the cut, Robin, right? That it was like, the, it was about this boy who shared a girl's nudes and how horrible his life was after it. It was called Cancelled at 17. And the author really took the side of this boy because she was talking wow. about how horrible it was that he had been canceled, so to speak. His name was written in a bathroom as, you know, don't feel safe around this guy. A lot of people stopped talking to him. Um, you know, he was just getting held accountable and he didn't have Good. to go to jail yeah. um, for something that is, pretty a, felony, <laughs> is yeah. a felony. Um it's pretty and we've spoken about um, cases in which girls who were in high school at the same time as me, their lives were ruined by these leaks yeah. um, and guys sharing stuff like this. And just the lack of empathy that was shown to them and the empathy in this article for this guy that was like, imagine his plight. Oh, no. Poor oh, no. Bobby. Like... 
First of all, we've hilarious. been doing that for years. That's how we keep each other safe. Um, there yeah. were lists of guys in the bathroom that were like, this person is not really super safe to have sex with, you know, like they don't mm -hmm. respect people. Um, that's, yeah. there's nothing wrong about that. That's people no, keeping that's themselves and others safe. When, what, what else are we to do? Are we, are we supposed to not warn each other so that you can continue to live your toxic masculinity mm -hmm. so that you can continue to feel empowered by your sick choices that, that victimize others. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care who you are. If you're Jesus, a bird hit the window. Whoa. She's sorry. He's okay. He flew oh, good. off. <laughs> He's like, I got so much millet. Um, <laughs> That was funny. Oh, poor mouth. I have stickers on. I have UV stickers in the window, and he still just is like thunk. Poor guy. Oh, he's okay. Um, he's not happy with the state of the world either. No, he's unhappy about it. I mean, that's there's always going to be some sympathizer, mm -hmm. and it's always if it's a female written article, that's also another woman who cannot empathize with what it's like mm -hmm. to be bullied by. Mm -hmm either an ex-partner or, I mean, especially in high school, I, I can attest to mm -hmm. that, having experienced a very toxic, dangerous relationship at 17, you feel in, entirely empower, empower, powerless, powerless at that time, yeah. completely powerless. And it is the most nauseating feeling in the world. You, I mean, it'll make you want to yeah. not be here anymore. Yeah. So I always, I just, whenever those things come up, I'm always shocked because I'm like, where were you for these girls whose lives were destroyed? Where are you now for them? Um, and why is it, why are we so like inclined to be like, oh, don't make his ha life hard, even a little hard. He can't have a, a hard life. Like, the yeah. whole backlash to me too was like him too. What if he gets called out for something that he didn't do? And it's like, this guy did do the thing and yeah. we're still trying to protect him and we're still trying to see his side. But he did do the thing. So it's like, yeah. you can say whatever reason you did for doing that, but you will in one way or another, if you can't criminally be held accountable by the law because you're a minor, you're going to be held accountable by your peers. Mm -hmm. And what better way to do that? Because then... Eventually, years will go by and you'll be so shattered by what your choice was. You mm -hmm. will never do that to another person again. You would never mm -hmm. share a person's intimate images mm -hmm. again. So in, in that case, he probably got the exact specific perfect karmic return for his choice. Yeah, it was perfect. He's going to go to jail. Yeah, he's not suffering. He's having to deal with his choice. And, and in God the event forbid, that like he does learn something. Hooray. Yeah. You know, he didn't have to go to jail and get traumatized that way. He just as yeah. you said, it was probably the perfect accountability. There's a guy in the comedy community that um, got called out. We have like a women's group where we write, you know, this guy did this to my friend or this guy did this to me. And like people talk about it. And we decided we're not talking to that guy anymore. We're not booking him anymore. If our boyfriends dap him, we tell them what's up. They stop. Um, mm -hmm. And can we stop him from performing everywhere in the city? No, but like he's definitely been held back from a lot of channels and hopefully learning or if not learning, mm -hmm. then not raising to a level where he'll have more power and be able to do more stuff. Exactly. When you have to in some, if nothing else, if you can't go to that guy and make him admit those faults in front of somebody else who can, mm -hmm. another man who can hold him accountable because it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. We don't have that situation right now where there's, you know, the comedy, you know, platform we don't have manager HR. that manages. Yeah. We, there's no HR. There's no HR for porn. Like mm -hmm. there's no HR for a lot of these industries where it's entertainment based. And I don't know, like our complaints fall by the wayside. So what else are we to do? Are we not supposed to talk to each other? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's like a, that's like a creepy yeah. movie. Yeah. It's yeah. like some, I don't know. So it's just, it's funny. Like, of course we're going to talk. That's what we do. We're yeah. good communicators. Women We're are good the divine feminine wants to talk. We build yeah. networks to keep each other safe. And yeah, I am always confused about what they're worried about, what happens when we're safe. And I've seen some guys say, 
well, the divorce rates have only gone up since they've gotten more rights. <laughs> You know, fear of rejection, fear, exactly. fear of rejection, or being there like, we, go. we won't be able to get them and keep them if they realize we're not worth it. If we don't have a built in thing in society that says we are something to yeah. be had without any yeah. other work or any other worth, um, we don't like that, you know, like we want they want to feel guarantee. purposeful, of course. 100%. Yeah, they want to feel like they want to feel like they have got like oh, she needs me and mm -hmm. I have purpose and I have, you know, she needs me to, and I have to provide for her. And, oh, and in exchange though, conditional love, I'm going to offer her conditional love and she has to meet these requirements in order for me to be the safety caregiver provider, mm -hmm. you know, all of that feathering her nest and shit. But that's not how it is anymore. Like women are finding their balance and embodying their divine masculine tendencies to go out and, and get the raise and do the thing and have mm -hmm. a kid alone and buy a house and just do her own thing and or support the wonderful guy who wants to stay yeah. home or co-parent exactly. with the person that makes you know also a same amount of money or whatever but like th my whole thing I always come back to don't you want to be wanted versus needed you know don't and you if don't you feel you? Yes. that you won't be wanted I am so sorry for you Maybe work. Well, on that's yourself. not our issue. Exactly. <laughs> if you want to, yeah. if you want to feel of worth, you have to feel worth to yourself. And that's mm -hmm. for no matter what gender you are, you have to like feel worthy before you can be worthy in another's eyes. And if mm -hmm. you're so worried about not being wanted, but you, that you have to create need for yourself, mm -hmm. then you're going to be let go of as women and other people that don't want that type of partner evolve out of that. I mean, I was like, laugh at that's like a straight male tendency typically, but I look at like a two female partnership that are give and take, give and take because everybody's got a little bit of every tendency mm -hmm. and, and they can find like a greater balance because there isn't this overt necessity to be, to create need for himself in a dynamic. And it's mm -hmm. like you, you dangle the carrot. She's not going to follow you eventually. She's not going to continue. To, like, this is like mm -hmm. the paradigm shift. You see it happening in families, there's divorces, there's split ups, there's breakups, mm -hmm. there's dissolutions of partnerships, people get quitting their jobs. Girls are bisexual now. Girls are all kinds of sexual. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's more pansexual people in the world yeah. because people, people in general, no gender included, are hot. People are hot. People are hot. And people people want to fuck each other and yeah. you don't have to be this or that do you know how much we want to fuck some of you but your opinions are making it hard it's very difficult to get wet when there's someone who is barking things at me mm -hmm. of like conditions that i need to meet in order to be attractive to him or to be desirable mm -hmm. by him and so it's really hard to find that balance with that kind of mindset no matter who embodies it that mindset at large is just dying and yeah you see a lot of these feminine qualities and all kinds of different people coming to the surface because the, the old way doesn't work anymore. We're all having to start from scratch and try something new. Mm -hmm. And that accept that acceptance, that compassion, that love, that unification, network, community, all of that is so new to so many of us, but it feels like it feels like relief for the first time in thousands of years. And I feel like that's why it's bubbling to the surface so rapidly because it feels like, oh, finally, we have something new to try with each other that works mm -hmm. far greater than this empowered and disempowered because mm -hmm. that's that doesn't work anymore. No, people in relationships where both people are empowered and both people are needed and wanted. It's like the yeah. most wonderful thing to see, no matter if they're the it's same amazing. gender, or different genders or whatever. Like it's yeah. nice. And it doesn't like doesn't create a dynamic where yeah one person gets to tell the other person exactly what to do and one person just feels like they're there to support the other person's life and why do you want that why do you need to stay in a partnership where you need to feel like you have to be the you know direction giver and the guider and stuff if you want that and i've noticed it's it's often with a lot of other my like straight male partners it's been that way um, before the one I have now, he's perfect. He never does anything wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like of the ones in the past that I've attracted, it's been because in some way I was like waiting for guidance. Mm -hmm. I attracted Same. this overtly Same. controlling person who is like, I don't know what to do. And then he comes in and goes, oh, I know everything. And mm -hmm. so then when I started to learn that he doesn't know everything and I know some things, 
then the balance, like the scale starts to tip a little bit. Totally. And that person who wants to remain, like, I have to be the one to offer the wisdom, the guidance. I have to feel incomplete. I have to feel strong and needed. And you have to give me that feeling of being needed. And you mm-hmm. need to make me feel like I'm a necessity. And so it all comes down to like, once one partner starts to feel empowered, the other starts, if they're not keeping up with that self empowerment, and yeah. they start to, you know, feel like, well, it's not balanced. This isn't fair anymore. I don't, I yeah. don't love you anymore or something. They offer the conditional love. And yeah, I had the same thing where you were saying that, like, you chose those people or you were more inclined to go towards those people. And I think it's the same thing that, like, I thought about during sex is like, they're going to tell me what's good. You know, they yeah. know what's best because that's what I that's I how I guess I was brought up in this society, you know, like same. and yeah. um, I'm happy that I tried it out and it didn't work. And I'm not interested in people like that anymore. I'm more interested with somebody yeah. who can get in touch with their feminine. My boyfriend put my nightgown on the first time we hooked up and I was like, oh, I'm in love so with hot. you. Yeah. Why is that so hot? Like, it's so hot. The thing is, most of these like super aggro, they don't get it. They don't get that that is hot to us. Like, I want to fuck you more. I want to be around you more. There was a time I found a nail polish in Ben's apartment and I was like, whose fucking nail polish is this? And he's like, it was mine. I used to paint my nails. And I was like, you're so fucking hot. I know. <laughs> like, what is that? Same with this this guy I'm with now. Who I just love. Mm-hmm. He and I go get pedicures and he gets gel. And because the gel stays on more. And I'm Amazing. like, you're... So and he's so beautiful. Oh my god, he is like the exterior who most people in general mm-hmm. would be afraid of, would be terrified of Aww. because of his exterior, because yeah. of the judgment. And he is the most beautiful because he's like, I don't know, he's a cancer. I'm, I don't know. I just, I love everything, and I'm excited about life, and I love how everything's opening for me, and I love opportunities that I attract, and you know, he's just like so different than any and like in tune scary exterior yeah oh my god but i think that the difference between those kind of guys is their masculinity doesn't rest on what it defined masculine in society it it yeah they're just like yeah i am confident yeah if you're happy then that's all you need you don't Mm -hmm. need to prove yourself to anyone else's expectations or fulfill anybody else's insufficiencies you just have to be yourself no matter if it's more masculine more feminine just yeah love what you love and be in co- okay with what you be love. who you Don't are ask anybody's permission yeah, th- yeah. Th- i've also seen people like backlashing like you know harry styles wants to wear certain really frilly clothes and he looks so cute or whatever and they're like so the men cute. are getting feminized or whatever and it's like if they want and we're just acknowledging that we find that hot and you're allowed to do that if you want and no one's telling that you have to we're just saying we like it so do what makes you happy like no no one's telling you you have to be gay no No one's telling you have to be gay do we like it a little bit yes (laughs) i would laugh at like the gay agenda like that makes me laugh so hard yeah because it's it what it is is it's not teaching you have a penis, so you are a man, or yeah. you have a vagina, so you absolutely are a woman. And yeah. lace and frills, so you're looking at the textural condition of a strip of fabric, or you're looking at a tone or color or mm-hmm. something by which our optical vision, which is very, very narrow, our band of actual visible ultraviolet mm-hmm. or violet wavelength is super, super narrow. You're claiming that one shade on this spectrum of visible photonic light is too feminine. So that and, you and defines as man, who you are as a person based on a based on lace yeah lace so a textured of fabric that is perforations in it and a scalloped edge that is unwanted you're mm-hmm. too gay for me you mm-hmm. might want to put your penis in my ass because you have a fabric <laughs> with perforations and a scalloped edge like when they, they ask to, what is a woman reply lace <laughs> lace <laughs> That's lace. lace and stockings and frills <laughs> and bows, perfumes and powders and like. like do you know how hilarious. many women don't like that shit? I like black. Yeah, I like leggings. I mean, some people do. I like a little bit sprinkled in here or there. 
but I like rocks. I like birds. I like mm-hmm. hiking. I like mm-hmm. marijuana. Mm-hmm. I like I like psychedelics. I like I honestly I like wieners more than most men like their wieners. Hell yeah! Like there's just there's so many different like you can be who you are. You don't have to be like you know nobody has to look at you and think oh because he's wearing pink and he's wearing high heels that he's gay. Yeah. Like, or he's like, I've heard, like, I always laugh at, I don't know if you guys watch the office. Yeah. Yeah. But like the one time when Michael, like Oscar was outed in the office and Michael was yes. telling Dwight and Dwight says, well, he's not dressed in women's clothes. Mm-hmm. It's like, Oh my God. <laughs> That's how it is now. I, um, I was talking to somebody who was trying to make a trans joke to me. And it was not pro trans. It was like, this guy goes to a doctor and the doctor's like, Mr. Brown, we have to talk about your labs. And the guy says, it's actually Mrs. Brown. And he says, oh, sorry, Mrs. Brown, you have prostate cancer. And I said, is that the end of the joke? Is the joke that some chicks have dicks and balls because they literally still have dicks and balls? And they said, yes. Like, that's- and a prostate. And a woman yeah. can get prostate yes. cancer. Like- yes. That's that's like <laughs> that's all my friends. Like yeah. no one else thinks that's funny besides you and your friends who also think in that reductionist, like sad right. little myopic manner. Like, I'm sorry, you don't have any you probably don't have any trans friends because you're really well, so you this was like the you're thing. missing out. They have told me before <laughs> that they know this trans guy that they always call a girl who is a who pretends to be a guy. And I said, remember that guy? And uh, they were like, yeah. Um, I was like, and this is a guy. So I was like, if you made out with that guy, would that be a straight kiss? Yeah. I said, no. And I love how they say, I love how they say pretends to be a guy. It's like, right. That's a, that's a trans man. Yeah. You can just be can like, just oh, well. just say trans man. If you're going to go by your own rules of like short haircut, t-shirt je- jeans you know wranglers whatever belt you know if you're going to go by those external rules you see a, a short haircut you see a person dressed in men's clothes you can just say he he or you can ask what are your yeah. pronouns i'd like to address you properly and yeah. because a trans man or a trans woman will not be generally i don't think would be offended by that if you wish to address them properly so you ask them how do you prefer to be addressed mm-hmm. so that you can establish because maybe he says she misses, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. maybe her name's Tracy, maybe her name's Pitt, whatever, whatever it is, but ask like, I mean, like mm-hmm. she pretends to be a man. Well, she probably identifies as male. She identifies. Yeah. Like she That's pretends. A- yeah. She's a pseudo man. She doesn't have a penis though. Like, <laughs> but I think, I think the reason that I asked the follow up question was because I think the reason why people are not inclined to validate others is because ha- of how it would af- reflect on them in a toxic mm-hmm. masculine way. If I were to validate yeah. this person, what would that say about me? And to me, the, the says that you're a nice person and that you're like willing to learn about other people and like what they prefer to be yeah. called and spoken like, to. I could imagine if I was born with, I just happen to be born with a penis, but I have the body and the mentality the face, the structure, you know, all the baseline stuff before I had cosmetic surgery done and breasts and stuff. I'd be like, well, I don't want to be raised in blue and play Mm -hmm. baseball and be forced to play basketball and hang out with other boys and like be forced to only have sex with a gender that is assigned to me. Like, yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't want that. Like I could imagine that must be like such a weird, so I don't know, whatever you've got down there is none of my business. I'm not trying to have sex with that many people. Exactly. That's the thing. It's Your like, genitals aren't my business. They're not my How business. You, not my business like, at all. <laughs> and that's what I get. Like I had somebody tell me too, that they were like, oh, well, every trans person that I know regrets bottom surgery. And I was like, whether that is true or not, the fact that people feel the need to get bottom surgery sometimes is because of people like you who won't believe that they are who they say they are until they fully yeah. change their body. And so yeah. like, that's just something that I believe in that you should be able to stay completely as you are and identify mm-hmm. however you want to. Yeah. If you want to go the the surgical steps, you know, to feel fully embodied as the gender 
you are, then Mm -hmm. go that route. There's Mm -hmm. nobody like that's why the surgeries exist because there's been enough of a need. Like if there wasn't bottom surgery, if there wasn't top surgery, if there wasn't gender affirming healthcare, it would be because there weren't enough people asking for it. Totally. Those things exist because there's so many people saying, I don't feel like this. I want to feel like that. Yeah. I want to feel like myself. I want to feel like myself. And so it's only really like the only business like I've been called like, oh, she looks kind of, you know, because I work out and I've had phases where I've built mm-hmm. bulked up and shredded yeah. down. I've gotten really fit and I've always had breast implants. And then I just took them out a couple of years ago. And it's been like, well, you look like, you know, you look more of like a man. And it's like, but is there shame in being a man? No. Well, no. Well, then I don't fear being called he by accident. Right. Right. If you think I look too masculine and you're, you know, I am accidentally misaddressed, there's no shame in being a man. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to, I'm just not going to correct you because. Are you still I'm subscribed? Are you still attracted? It's usually with men. And so I don't know. It's just so funny that the thoughts and like perceptions of stuff and like gender differences, like, sure, there are some, but now it's not really so cut and dry. It's kind of more like this really long spectrum. Mm -hmm. of like all these gradients of Mm -hmm. identification and sexuality and gender doesn't have to bleed into sexuality or preference and who you date Mm -hmm. and people's genitals are not our business and unless you're like watching my porn and stuff then you're looking at it and you know they get their business for a minute but (laughs) in general in general it's none of your business what i do with with my body or not do with my body and i think that's just a hard thing to let go of because there's this deep-seated fear of well, if I was a man and suddenly I felt feminine and cut my dick off, then I would feel bad about it. And so you're just right. you're just projecting they're, your they're own usually fear. asking, "Are you a guy?" So they can know, can I be attracted to you without it being gay? Yeah, and it's like, or are you a possibility or an opportunity for me? And it's like you need to yeah. stop asking about people's genitals, or like stop asking, "Have you had the surgery? Are you post-op?" Mm-hmm. Like that is not your business. That is the business of that person who's in the body and whose partners they wish to have in sexual interaction. Mm-hmm. It's not your business. They're they're not going to likely sleep with someone who asks them, what mm-hmm. are you? Needs like, what that. have yeah. you had no. done? And yeah. that's not going to happen for you anyway. So you might as well just keep that question to yourself and respectfully address them as just a regular person. Totally. And people trying to defend themselves isn't being militant. And people calling yeah. out what's wrong isn't um, against your rights. Yeah. But, um, I just wanted to read these things I found the other day because we were talking about like the evil that they are afraid of with the divine feminine. And there, um, is a pamphlet that was put out during suffrage called household hints. And it said, vote no on women's suffrage because 90% of the women either do not want it or do not care because it means competition to women with men instead of cooperation because 80% of the women eligible to vote are married and can only double or annul their husband's votes because it can be of no benefit commensurate with the additional expense involved because in some states, more voting women than voting men will place government under petticoat rule because it is unwise to risk the good we already have for the evil which may occur. Wow. What? It's fear. What are we going to do? <laughs> Unbelievable. They're like, no, 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 no. It's, no, it's no, too no. scary to let them have rights. It's just too scary. Let's just vote no. They don't care. They, this is not like men telling women that they don't care. This is men mm-hmm. telling other men that women don't care mm-hmm. or didn't care. And when was, women were like, we're so programmed and indoctrinated with this male power situation. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, if at any point during our history, we were having like male, male order, male brides and male, um, like arranged marriages where his family had a a little boy had to get sold to a lady for a farm. Yeah. Yeah. And he got married at 12 to a, to a woman, to a princess who was in her thirties. None of us are cool with that. Like, no, nobody would be cool. Like this has been going on for such a long time that because it's, it's been so fucking bad. And now Mm -hmm. that it's slightly, you know, it's starting to really drastically improve. They're going, no, 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 this is getting too out of control. It's too wild. They have that unconscious or subconscious memory of 
when they were absolutely top of the heap and they thought they were, they thought they were, you know, the ultimate wisdom keepers and they have all this mm -hmm. knowledge and they're so superior. And that's just not that way anymore. There's people that are completely genderless that have far more intelligence and wisdom than mm -hmm. bureaucracy and, you know, diplomacy and compassion that can mm -hmm. make well-educated decisions, but are marginalized by society and not allowed to climb the ladder to mm -hmm. even be within the same room as a group of straight white men making decisions for the rest of us. Yeah. I think it was um, Michelle Hope who we had on that we were talking about. She's like, the system's not broken. It's working for who it was made for. And it's exactly it, right. You know, yeah. that's that's what's going on. And we're just trying to make it equal for everybody. We don't want to swing yeah. that pendulum to the place where you guys are scared. That would never no. we, we would never want to inflict that on someone. Um, no, even because then I it would see, be like it would be just it's we'd, hypocritical. We have a woman born in a in a or a young, you know, a, a female body born. And we'd be like, well, you're female. You're going to be like the rest of us. You're going right. to. You, you're going to like all the stuff that, and if she no. identifies as male, then we're like, no, 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 we got to squash that out of you. Like, yeah, that would never that, be a thing. Was, we know. love trans boys. We love non-binary people. And I love to learn something new from someone who I will never be able to have full empathy for because I can't live through their experience. And if they can teach me something that's yeah. unique and incredible about them that makes them who they are, I want to hear about it. Like I want, I want to include everybody. I want everybody yeah. to feel in their own rightness. Okay. And if everybody felt okay in their own rightness, there would not be a single argument. Nobody would need to try to prove their rightness. They just mm -hmm. could just be okay with being right and being different. Totally. Yeah. I think a, lo a lot of it comes from just being like, I don't get it. So that means that I have to change my whole worldview. And it's like, I've had those moments too, where I've been like, Oh my God, it's too much. And then I try to step back and I go, why? You know, like yeah. what and makes it too much? Grow? Yeah. And just I mean, that you have to learn another thing right this second. Like, okay. And that's okay. Like, yeah. wouldn't you, uh, you know, if suddenly as a man, if you started a new job and you were making more money doing different responsibilities and yet you came back the next day or you came back Monday or something after the weekend and everybody just, Hey Bobby, get back to work. And you, they expect you to go do the job that you've done this entire time. Mm -hmm. even though you just got a raise and you just got a promotion to something a little bit better for you that you feel more empowered in, we still identify you in this role that you've been for so many years that we're just going to put you right back in that position. Robin, you're still an intern. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy. You can't limit anybody's expansion. You got to let people grow and be who they're going to be. And there's mm -hmm. no, there's no growth in lack of diversity. And if you're like, worried that you're going to get left behind, it might be time for some growing pains. Honestly, the most difficult things I've ever put myself through have been when I didn't want to accept mm -hmm. a truth that was true for somebody else and had nothing to do with me. A hundred percent. Like I put myself through this ridiculous suffering of thinking, well, I have to conform. It's like, no, no, no. You don't have to change anything about what you're doing. You just have to be compassionate. And if being compassionate and you don't have to go through and know like, just pronouns you would do it anyway mm -hmm. just let people have their have their autonomy have their free will you don't mm -hmm. need to control anything and if you think that one of your decisions is going to help someone else by you deciding for them take a look in the mirror and ask yourself is am i really respecting their free will or am right. i projecting my beliefs about how they would best be happy onto them and making decision on their behalf i think a lot of people just get jealous and they see people living their lives and being happy and they are jealous because they didn't get to grow up that way. And instead of being like, yeah. well, why don't I just live my truth and fuck more? They try to stop other people from having fun. Mm -hmm. Don't be it's that true. guy. It's like they don't <laughs> want to stop. Fuck more. The, yeah, <laughs> just fuck more. Be yourself. Love what you choose. Yeah. Nicole, it has been so nice talking to you. Um, can you tell everybody Thanks. where they can find you and everything that you're working on? A ton of wellness. Um, CBD proprietary, closer to Nicole.com. Mm -hmm. OnlyFans um, is linked on my Twitter, which is X Nicole Anderson X. Look for the blue check mark. Don't talk to anybody who doesn't have a blue check mark. It's probably mm -hmm. a man trying to take your money. Um, <laughs> Instagram is at real Nicole Aniston, 3.6 million followers. Please look for the blue check mark as well. It's 
I don't have chat sites and all that. Like there's scammers mm-hmm. galore right now. So just keep your keep your card numbers Spam to yourself. Spam risk. <laughs> Spam risk. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Though. Thank you pleasure. so much for being here. I do have to ask you one more question, which we have to ask sure. everybody after a sexual experience. Nicole, did you finish? I did. Okay, great. Thank you yeah. so much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. It. And we'll see you guys next time on How Come. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's not you, it's me. I try so hard to finish honestly. They say you'll know when you go all the way from A right down to O. Oh, oh no. I think that I still got a ways to go. Oh, oh. I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves I'm rolling up my sleeves Oh baby I believe these guests can help Cause I can't do it by myself I wanna just 